Okay, hello and welcome to one of the final videos on sort of the very fundamentals, and then we can move on to some things that are actually more more uh, helpful for the GMAT past sort of the very fundamentals, but these obviously are incredibly important to know, so don't skip it. Um, so the first thing to mention is that quadratics of zero, one or two solutions, which are also called roots, um, and by quadratic in general, we mean an equation in this form, that uh, being the canonical, canonical form where you make the right hand side equal to zero, that's very important. Um, and the reason why I've made this the first point is just that for data sufficiency, um, zero, one or two solutions is very important because given a quadratic, e.g. this equation, uh, in one unknown, we don't actually know yet whether or not that's enough to determine x because according to data sufficiency, you need to uniquely determine x. So uh, we need to solve the quadratic in order to find out whether there's one solution, in which case we have found x, or two solutions, in which case we haven't. So just be very wary of quadratics in data sufficiency and um, usually you have to solve them, unfortunately. Um, the next thing is that just make sure you can factorize quadratics very quickly. Um, make sure the right hand side is zero. And then uh, what you're doing is you're trying to factorize it into this form, x plus alpha, x plus beta, um, where alpha times beta is equal to C uh, and alpha plus beta is equal to B. Um, notice how I've made the, the coefficient of x uh, equal to one, um, just because it tends to be much easier to factorize if you do that. Um, we'll talk a bit later in, about things to do if you really are struggling to factorize a particular quadratic. Um, but effectively, make sure you're very, very practiced with this and it's sort of second nature to you because you, you just need to be very fast, otherwise you'll run out of time. Um, so the first thing I recommend is just look for the factors of C um, and then sort of uh, pick um, the two numbers that sort of work. It's it's kind of just um, done by by I. So for example, uh, X squared plus um, six X plus eight equals zero. The way I'd look at that is say, okay, eight, uh, that has factors one, two, four and eight. And so just looking at that, well, we need two numbers that multiply together and add to make six. So very quickly, it's just going to be x plus two, x plus four equals zero. So make sure you can do that. And then that tells us that the actual solutions are the opposite of what we've written down in the bracket. So x equals minus two or x equals minus four. So make sure you're very, very comfortable in factorizing quadratics. There's plenty of materials online if you need practice with that. Um, so then there's sort of what to do if you can't factorize and there's a few options um something that's useful to know is the quadratic equation so given uh a, a quadratic in the general form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero you can always solve for x using this thing called the quadratic equation which is looks a bit annoying but reasons we'll talk about in a second so that that just gives you the answer for x um and so if you really can't factorize you can sort of think about doing that although um in general you probably don't want to be doing that but the reason why that actually can be useful is let's say you don't actually need to find x you just need to know how many solutions there are well then if it's a particularly tricky thing to factorize or if it, it simply can't be factorized you need to know how to check that um, because let's say you're struggling to factorize a quadratic, how do you know whether that's because you're missing a factorization or because it simply just cannot be factorized? And so that's where this idea of the discriminant comes in. And the discriminant is just this part of the quadratic equation. So make sure you know this. The discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. And essentially, just looking at that, if, if you have a square root of a number, uh, if that number is negative, then the answer is imaginary, or in other words, there's no there's no real solutions. So this discriminant, which you can very quickly write down just from the original quadratic equation, you 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 know a, b, and c. Uh, you can determine how many solutions there are just by following this very very simple set of rules. If the discriminant is less than zero, that means no solutions. If it equals zero, that means one solution, one repeated solution. 
And if it's greater than zero, that means two distinct solutions. And uh, in this situation, it, you won't be able to factorize the uh, quadratic um, because the factorized form is the other solution. So obviously if there are no solutions, it can't be factorized. Um, one other important method to know is about is completing the square. Uh, that's useful for finding the minimum or maximum of a quadratic, or it can actually be helpful to factorize nasty quadratics. And it's just good to have a few different tools at your disposal. So for example, uh, I've seen things like this in the GMAT, x squared minus 4x um, minus, uh, I believe it was 672 equals zero. And that, that is relatively nasty to factorize. So instead, what we can do is use this idea of completing the square, which is where you simply take this value, halve it, and rewrite the quadratic as this, x minus, so in this case, half of minus four is minus two. So x minus two squared, and then minus the um, number squared, so minus, 2 squared minus 672, we leave that thing alone, equals 0. And so now we've got x minus 2 squared equals 676, which actually is just 26 squared. So we've very quickly got to the idea that x minus 2 equals 26 plus or minus 26. And so x equals 28 or minus 24. Um, now, the other point and why this is uh, actually helpful as well is because if we rewrite this as we have it here, x minus 2 squared minus 676 equals 0. Well, this thing in the brackets is a squared number and squared numbers are at most, uh, at least 0. They're always positive. And so if we look at this this identity here, then we can see that the minimum value of the quadratic is going to be minus 676, uh, and it occurs at x equals 2. So that, that can be helpful for sketching quadratics or for answering um, what is the minimum value and when, when does it occur kind of thing. And so make sure you're familiar with completing the square as well. Uh, and then the final thing to mention for quadratics is just make sure you're very, very comfortable with sketching them in the various cases. So the most important case is just when you've factorized already, let's say it's x minus three, x minus five, zero. Well, these are very, very easy to sketch. You just look at the values of x. So there, that, we, that tells us x equals three or x equals five. So that's where the quadratic equals zero. And then you just sort of join them up as a little smiley face. If it's a positive x quadratic, and if it was a negative x quadratic, for example, 3 minus x, x minus 5, well, those have, that's got the same solutions. But if you imagine expanding that out, you'd have a minus x squared term at the front. So if you have a minus x squared term, it's the same thing, but sort of a frowny face instead. And we'll see why that's very important uh, very shortly when we start doing some questions. Uh, so that's that's the most common case where there's two solutions. Um, but then, if you've solved the discriminant or you know found that, for example, there's only one solution, in which case you'll get something like this. You'll get a repeated root, for example, x minus two squared equals zero. Then the case where there's only one solution it should make sense. It just looks like this because what else could it be? Uh, and then in the case where there's no solutions, well, that's the same as it being positive for all values of X or negative for all values of X. If it was a negative quadratic, e.g. it just doesn't cross the axis. So it's somewhere up here. So make sure you're comfortable with uh, sketching those kind of things. Um, and that is should be everything you need to know about quadratics.